Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's the weekend roundup. All right, let's... Oh, it's, it's just me here. All right, I'm doing it alone. So over the last few weeks, we've learned some more details about the next-gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And if you were the only one who thought the Xbox Series X seemed a bit more powerful than the PS5, well, you're not alone. Now, we know from the specs of both machines that the Xbox Series X does have a faster processor. It clocked in at 3.8 gigahertz. Its GPU is close to two teraflops more powerful than the PS5s. But some people are saying that the difference is much more pronounced than just a couple of teraflops. Former Sony developer Chris Gunnell wrote on Twitter, I think it's Chris Grinnell actually. Anyway, he wrote on Twitter, I've chatted to a few devs and they've confirmed the power difference is quite staggering. However, they have said it doesn't mean you can't make good games on the PS5. Then he said, these fanboys clearly don't care about that and are massively rattled. Weird dig the PS5 fans, but whatever. Then again, Sony seems to be focusing relatively less on raw power and putting more of an emphasis on the speed of its solid state drive, which some people think could be as much as twice as fast as the Xbox Series X, as well as features on the PS5. They've been talking up 3D audio a lot. But back to those specs, is the Xbox Series X really that much better than the PS5? Others actually say no. Jason Trier of Kotaku said on a recent podcast, he's heard the exact opposite from developers. Despite that famous 10.2 versus 12 teraflop comparison, he said that the people I've been talking to over the past few months, over the past couple of years, who are actually working on the PlayStation 5 have pretty much unanimously all said, this thing is a beast. It's one of the coolest pieces of hardware that we've ever seen or used before. There are so many things here that are revolutionary. He said though that the general consensus is that both are powerful and they're both quote, extremely impressive pieces of technology. But then again, first impressions, they're important. Just ask Microsoft about the current gen. They got off to a terrible start with the rollout of the Xbox One, never really recovered. Schreier added that because of the way Sony has actually presented and marketed this thing, talking about the PS5. Now the narrative is that the Xbox Series X is way more powerful than the PS5, and I think that is such a maybe fatal flaw on Sony's part for this console generation. So we'll see. As for me, it's going to come down to the games, like it always does, but for now, it's fun to argue over teraflops. Moving on, speaking of Sony, they've got some big games coming out this year as the PlayStation 4 nears the end of its life. Ghosts of Tsushima is due out in June. The Last of Us 2 is expected a month before that in May, but will they actually hit those release dates because, well, something called the coronavirus that's got us all on lockdown. Sony, though, says no, it doesn't expect delays of games that are currently in active development. In a statement recently, they said, although no issues have emerged so far, Sony is carefully monitoring the risks of delays and production schedules for game software titles at both its first party studios and partner studios, primarily in Europe and the US. So for now, no delays. Uh, we'll see in a month from now. Nintendo dropped a mini direct on us this week with a pretty decent amount of announcements. I'll run most of them down. We got a release date for Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It's coming out May 29th for the Switch. Of course, it's coming to the Switch. Where else would it come? Burnout Paradise Remastered is coming later this year. Oh, 2K announced it's bringing a bunch of games to the Switch. Also May 29th. What is it about that date? The 2K games will include XCOM 2 Collection, the Borderlands Legacy Collection. That includes Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel. All three Bioshock games too. I think you can get those separately or as a collection. It's also a new puzzle game called Good Job that Nintendo showed off. It's out today. It looks kind of cool. They also announced some more Star Wars ports. Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. It's out now. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. I remember that for the Nintendo 64. Dang, it's out later this year. Meanwhile, Catherine Full Body will come to the Switch July 7th. Ring Fit Adventure has a new rhythm mode for all of you stuck in your house, which is pretty much all of us. They showed off some of the armor expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, and the new DLC fighter for Smash is from ARMS. We don't know which character, but it's going to be out in June. Epic Games announced they are getting even deeper into publishing with three new partnerships. They announced three deals with Remedy Entertainment, Play Dead, and Gen Design. Remedy, of course, they're known for making control. Play Dead made Limbo and Inside. Gen Design is led by Fumito Ueda, who developed a little game called Shadow of the Colossus. So pretty strong lineup. Sounds like more are on the way. Epic said that additional information, development partners, and games will be announced in the coming months. Epic says the developers retain all their intellectual property under this deal and creative control of their work. Basically, the profit share is going to be 50-50. Epic said it's going to cover up to 100% of development costs. So pretty crazy. Epic CEO Tim Sweeney said, we 
we're building the publishing model we always wanted for ourselves when we worked with publishers. All right, let's talk about Bioware. Hasn't exactly had the best run of things lately with games like Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Anthem. Not exactly setting the world on fire, but they are still at it. According to a recent job listing, they're working on a new game from one of the studio's most prestigious franchises. It's for a technical director. The job listing is in their home office of Edmonton up there in Canada, and the description says, you will be the most senior engineering lead on the next major title and one of Bioware's most prestigious franchises and a contributing leader to Bioware Studio strategy. You will partner with the other disciplines to build the technology and the programming team to deliver amazing player experiences. Sounds like they need a smart person. I'm out. Uh, so maybe a new Mass Effect game? I don't know. We know they're working on Dragon Age 4, so that's a possibility. They're also rebooting Anthem, but that's probably not what this listing is referring to because it said prestigious. Boom. Got him. All right, now time for a five second review. Yeah, I still can't afford VR. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Persona 5 Royal. Royal? Royal. Royal with cheese? I don't know. Don the mask of Joker and join the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Break free from the chains of modern society and stage grand heists to infiltrate the minds of the corrupt and make them change their ways. Persona 5 Royal is packed with new characters, competence, story depth, new locations to explore, and a new grappling hook mechanic for stealthy access to new areas. With a new semester at Shujan Academy, get ready to strengthen your abilities in the metaverse and in your daily life. Explore Tokyo, unlock new personas, customize your own personal thieves den, discover a never before seen story arc, cutscenes, alternate endings, and more. Pretty cool. Persona 5 Royal presents a unique visual style and award nominated composer Shoji Maguro returns with an all new soundtrack. It's coming to the PS4 March 31st. Next up, Zombie Army Trilogy. The cult horror shooter comes to the Switch with three exhilarating campaigns a heart-pumping horde mode, and intense horror action. In the dying flames of World War II, a legion of undead super soldiers threaten to overwhelm the whole of Europe, fight alone, or team up to save humanity from the zombie menace. Battle through three epic campaigns across 15 demon-infested missions. Play solo or fight back-to-back -back in online or local wireless co-op for two to four players. Shred the undead with genre-best rifle ballistics, powerful weapons, and deadly traps. Wince as your bullets tear apart the undead with gruesome x-ray kill cams. It's out for the Switch, March 31st. I'm excited about this one, Bubble Bobble Friends 4. You can play alone or with up to three friends in couch co-op mode, jump your bubble dragons through 100 levels to defeat the wicked magician Bonner and his henchmen. The popular dragons Bub and Bob are back. Bubble Bobble 4 Friends is the latest game in the legendary series from Taito. The bubbles don't just let you trap your opponents either in this game. Your dragons can also jump on them to reach higher platforms, collect extend bubbles to activate and upgrade skills such as light lightning and bomb bubbles, develop countless new strategies to travel through the worlds and take advantage of air currents. The original Bubble Bobble game from 1986, oh, I remember it, is also included, which captured the hearts of players around the world and still has fans humming its little melody today. It comes to the Switch March 31st. Next up, The Complex. From the publishing studio behind Late Shift comes a new cinematic interactive sci-fi thriller FMV for PC and Mac. After a major bioweapon attack on London, two scientists find themselves in a lockdown laboratory with time and air running out. FMV, this sounds like Night Trap a little bit. With choose your own path style gameplay, your actions and your relationship with other characters will lead you to one of eight suspenseful endings. Night Trap, it reminds me of Night Trap. Having treated the victims of a chemical attack in the totalitarian state of Kindar, Dr. Amy Tennant is a leader in the advancement of nanocell technology. Now in London, news breaks of a blood vomiting civilian whose identity is far from coincidental, reunited with an old friend, Amy is trapped in an impenetrable headquarters of laboratories, a womb of scientific advancement with a perilous secret. It comes to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, March 31st. And finally, the Resident Evil 3 remake, almost here. Oh, get excited. Jill Valentine is one of the last remaining people in Raccoon City to witness the atrocities of Umbrella performed. To stop her, Umbrella unleashes their secret weapon, 
Nemesis. Oh, old school. This also includes Resident Evil Resistance, a new one versus four online multiplayer game set in the Resident Evil universe. Four survivors faced off against a sinister mastermind. It comes to PC, Xbox One, and PS4 April 3rd. All right, that's all the news we've got for you. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. Big shout out to everybody who has to work, all the essential people, uh, healthcare, if you work at a grocery store. God bless you. I'm thinking about you. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Happy Monday. Let's talk console wars, baby. Mine is better. Yours sucks. It's the most Ooh. wonderful time of the year. Yeah, they're still about a year away, but now both Sony and Microsoft have revealed some details bit. about their upcoming machines. Emphasis on some. With a little bit of emphasis. Oh. Uh, but hey, it's still enough to do some comparisons and get those online.